recruitment and retraining was all in one section and it was in Wyden, the old Wyden police station, that was the college upstairs and uh, there was a lot of physical activity every day and we did 18 weeks of in the classroom and then we went out on the road for five weeks it's just riding shotgun in the back of a car with uh, at a couple of stations and two weeks with the uh, accident squad as it was called then and then back in for another six weeks where we uh, did more advanced training uh, mostly under the tutelage of the um, detective school instructors uh, where we did a bit of arson a little bit of homicide and burglary and things like that that we hadn't covered earlier on but in total the training was 26 weeks and we hit the track in uh, 1976 in February in number one division which is now City Station and uh, in August of uh, that year Bell Conran opened and uh, Peter Dawson was promoted to Chief Inspector and made the OIC at, uh, at Bell Conran. Then I went national for some time uh, to recruit training and various other national areas, all in Canberra. And then in '94, I was uh, invited back to the ACT as a watch house sergeant, which I did for a while, and then back on the road. We had two lots of turmoil in my uh, time, I guess, because when I was in recruit training, we had the constitutional crisis where the Whitlam government was sacked. And at that stage, there was, that was the first attempt to form what was going to be the Australia Police with Customs ourselves, the Northern Territory Police and uh, the Commonwealth Police. And one of Fraser's um, election promises was that he knocked that on the head, which suited everybody in those days. And uh, so we didn't end up graduating in the uniform that was going to be the Australia Police. We went back to the ACT uniform, but we didn't have those uniforms. We borrowed them from the, the blokes at Woden Station, loaned them to us. Interesting time, we didn't get paid one fortnight because supply was blocked. So there was no money, and uh, the, uh, the old police credit union saw us right. And then things got sorted out and money started to flow again. And then the amalgamation, um, none of us wanted it. We just wanted to stay in the ACT police. That was our, that was our little thing. And, but it turned out for the better, I think, in the long run. But it was pretty difficult in the early days. There was a lot of suspicion and mistrust and dislike of the other side. And, but there were some great guys coming over from Compom. I was placed in charge of logistics and welfare and of the AFP rescue component that went to Threadbay. And I spent the week on that site. And uh, you know, I was standing about from here to the door away when they pulled Stuart Diver out of there. And that was, that was most satisfying. I wasn't there in the pit in the hole like the rescue guys were, but I was making sure that they were equipped and, and fed and everything else, which they were. But that was a, a significant highlight for me. Um, I was, well, you know, as tragic as it was in the long run, with 19 people being being uh, killed, and I guess uh, probably being duty officer the day the hospital blew up, which involved another tragedy. But I don't know whether you'd call them highlights. Or they're significant events for me as a, a supervisor and a, um, a sergeant in those days. Yeah, the expertise is required now to actually do the job with the technology and keep trying to stay one step ahead of the crooks who are getting smarter all the time is a lot harder than it was when uh, when I was on the road. And the other thing too, when in the early days of, say, Bill Conran, we used to solve a lot of crimes because we knew who all the crooks were. Well, that, that went for the whole of Canberra. The guys in the CIB, they knew all the crooks. And uh, the suspect list was usually narrowed down fairly quickly. It didn't solve everything, but we used to have a pretty fair strike rate. And, uh, for example, we, uh, my colleague and I stopped one night, stopped a vehicle one night that we thought looked a bit suspicious, and we ended up doing 17 brakes on them. And the stopped, there was a brake and hit a spree around Bell Conran here for a couple of weeks, and we broke that up. And working with the CIB guys that were on duty that night, we managed to uh, wrap that up. When I was last in GDs, you know, the guys that were working with me, they were doing eight, nine, ten jobs a shift. We used to be lucky if we had two or three. So we had a lot of time to, um, to do things. I worked with a, a bloke on the road here. We were in the same car for nearly four years. And we're still good mates and we're godparents to each other's children and things like that. And uh, he and I used to really wreck into the, uh, the nightclubs on a Friday and Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. And street offences, they just weren't tolerated in those days. Absolutely not tolerated. Swearing in the street, 
urinating in the street, any of that sort of stuff. Everyone got locked up. There was no summons. We used to arrest everybody. And, uh, and on even going to court was different. We didn't have the, the big long breaks between shifts. If we finished night shift on a Monday morning, we had to be back on deck at 2.30 in the afternoon to take over the afternoon shift. And if you had fresh charges that you'd locked up people the previous week or over the weekend, you had to be in court and you had to be there.